Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. We're back. And what better way to be back than by cooking my favorite Malaysian meal, which is the chili pan mee. So today I'm making the chili pan mee, the dry version, and it's my absolute favorite. So let's get cooking. So for this recipe, we just need a few ingredients to really make this lovely and fragrant and super delicious chili oil. I literally use this for everything, nasi goreng. I used to sell chili oil as well and um, I put it in my curries, I put it in my stir fries. And of course, for this special recipe, we're also using it for our chili pan mee. So what you need is a lot of garlic and I want to slice it really, really thin so that it becomes really crispy when we fry it. I'm also using shallots and I'm also going to like slice it really thin. And today we're also using very spicy chili, okay? This is chili kering, which, you know, I've just rinsed and then just dried. And we're going to do it whole because after this, we're just going to blend everything. So you take your mandolin, be really careful. Um, and you, what you want to do is just slice it really thin, okay? And the reason why I use the mandolin is because I want all of the pieces of garlic to be the same size so they cook the same time if you use like if you slice it or chop it you know sometimes you have like bigger pieces and then you have smaller pieces and then sometimes it will burn so you don't want that right so the only way to stop that from happening is to make sure that you uh, use a mandolin so all of the slices are equal in size now for the shallot pun sama. This is a uh, bawang kecil and again just slice. So I'm using equal parts of shallots to equal parts of garlic, a quarter of chili. Garlic done and then our shallots is done. So what we want to do now is we want to fry everything up really nice and crispy. Turn your heat up. I have about 400 ml of vegetable oil here. So we're just going to add that all in and this oil is also going to be used as the chili oil. So I'm going to fry everything and I'm going to reuse the oil, okay? So we're not wasting any oil. Harga minyak kan mahal sekarang. So we just recycle everything, okay? So we'll wait for the oil to heat up. You don't want it to be too high heat. It's got to be about medium. So I'm going to start with the garlic first. The oil is like sort of hot, tapi not yet hot. And that's when I want to put the garlic in. And then we're just going to slowly increase the heat. Just spread it around like this. So we're just going to let that kind of bubble and do its thing. It's going to take a couple of minutes. Okay, so at this point, it's so important for you to pay attention to your garlic, okay? It's starting to sort of be brown on the edges, but a very light brown. And then it's going to turn crispy very fast. And as you can see here, it's really starting to become a little bit browner, a little bit browner, a little bit browner. And at this point, you dah kena prepare your bowl, some kitchen towel, ambil your sieve, and then you got to start picking it up already. So what I like to do is at this point, count to like five. And then you got to start picking it up. Because what's going to happen is it's going to continue kind of cooking in the, in the bowl. Okay, so the oil is still hot. We can add in our shallots. Okay, so you just swish it around and let that kind of deep fry. Again, it's starting to brown very fast. And again, we count to five. And then just put it into the same bowl with your garlic tadi. Okay, oil's still hot. Now it's time to fry your dried chilies, okay? In it goes. This one doesn't take very long. And the reason why we know that is when the chili like puffs up and then it gets a little bit of color on it, you can you can take it out. Of course, if you like your chili like your chili oil really spicy, then you can add more chili. So you can add the chili kering yang uh, chili padi. Okay, that's it. Now we just need to blend everything together. So you have to wait for your oil to like kind of cool down a little bit before you blend everything, okay? Because it's very, very hot oil. But in the meantime, you can add all of your ingredients into a blender. So you get, you need to get a really good blender for this. So add everything in. You got your chilies, your onion, your garlic. Okay, now we're gonna add in the oil. So very, be very careful with this one. Add all of it in. 
Now we need to add in all of the flavorings, okay? So for that hint of sweetness, we're going to add in some brown sugar. So quite a bit of brown sugar. I use about between four to six tablespoons, depending on how pedas the chili is. The more pedas it is, you want to balance out the heat, you add more sugar. And then we're going to add in two tablespoons of salt. You can always adjust this later on. And then we're going to blend it. Wow. And I'm just going to taste it to make sure that you cook that everything. So good. Ooh, pedas. But the sugars are going to balance out. Now the sugars is a bit grainy for now, but over time it's going to dilute. It's gonna chai, it's going to really make that chili oil super special. The longer you keep your chili oil, the more delicious it is. So now what you wanna do is you wanna get some jars and we're gonna put the chili oil into some jars. You can save some for later and we can use some for our chili pan. Homemade noodles. You need self-raising flour. So I've got about 450 grams of self-raising flour here. If you don't have a stand mixer like me, you can just do it by hand. No problem. You just got to knead it until it becomes really smooth and elastic. The flour goes in and then we're going to crack in one egg. Now always crack in your egg into a bowl first because you never know when you're going to have a good egg or a bad egg, okay? If you put it in here already and you're going to throw it throughout the whole thing. So always crack an egg into a bowl first so this goes in now you just want to mix this on a medium to low heat okay not too high you just want to mix it on a low until the egg is incorporated into the flour then we're going to add in some salt and water and about a tablespoon of oil so our dough is done and it's really fluffy and then when you poke it it kind of bounces back a little bit you want to put it in a bowl like so and then we're going to cling wrap it and let it sit for about an hour and then we're going to roll it out and make our noodles okay so after an hour your dough has like kind of like chilled okay and um, you know we use the stand mixer to like really beat it to like kind of get all the gluten um, activated so that makes your noodles kind of like chewy and bouncy okay so if I poke it it bounces back that means it's really good to go so I've got some corn flour here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dust my work surface with corn flour and then we're gonna roll out our dough and I'm just gonna knead it a little bit okay just a little bit and to make it a little bit easier what we're gonna do is we're gonna portion it out so I'm just going to cut my dough into Three, about the same size portion so it's easier for me to to work with it now we cover this with cling wrap because we don't want it to dry out like so okay and then with this piece what we're going to do is we're just going to roll it out now it's really important when you're rolling out your dough is to always push out and don't push back in too much okay that's a little bit more corn flour and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over and then I'm just going to push it. And we want to do this a few times. Just make sure that you dust the inside or not it will get stuck. And if you see that your dough is getting a little bit bigger for your rolling pin, you can always just cut it as well. Okay, so I'm just going to cut it in half. You do this until you, you like the, the, how thin your, your dough is. What we do next is we fold it like an accordion like this. And then you take a knife, cut it in half, put it over, and then you cut it as how thick you want it. Okay, don't forget to dust, and then you have your homemade noodles. Ta -da! You can store your noodles at least up to two weeks in the fridge. The only thing you need to do is get some cling wrap, put your noodles on top, wrap it up real tight. And then you have one portion of noodles. So if you're going to portion out your panmi noodles or your homemade noodles um, for storage, it's easy to do it as you're cutting up your noodles. So I have about 150 grams per portion here. And just put it in cling film like so. Um, and then you can store it in the fridge for up to two weeks. Um, I like to also add it into an airtight container. Okay, so double. This whole recipe makes about four to five portions. Um, so I'm just going to keep on rolling my noodles until I have all the portions I need. 
So now we're going to make what the meaty uh, element to our pan mi. Okay, so there are two types of proteins that you have in your pan mi. It's ch chicken um, and also ikan bilis or anchovy. So traditionally, obviously, they use pork and lard for this. But this is the halal version. So we are going to be using um, minced chicken for this recipe. Before we fry our minced chicken up with some really delicious aromatics, let's fry up our ikan bilis, okay? So in your pan, turn the fire up, add in a little bit of oil, some vegetable oil, let that heat up and again, medium to high heat. Don't like fry your ikan bilis on a high heat. You're going to burn it. So you want to kind of like um, slowly increase the heat. What it does is it actually helps like make your ikan bilis really crispy. And the tip is, is to allow it to draw out all of that extra moisture. Okay, so oil is a little bit hot. Now we add in our ikan bilis, swish it around a little bit and again, with ikan bilis or anything that has moisture like your garlic, your onion, if you want it really crispy. When you first put it in, the bubbles are big and there's a lot of bubbles, right? So you want to cook it until the bubbles reduce in size and become non-existent. So this is kind of like the salty umami element in your pan mi. Not going to discard this oil, we're going to use it to flavour up our minced chicken, okay? But before I do that, I have some chicken skin and chicken fat here. So what this does, it adds another layer of sedapness, okay? So this one, usually in traditional pan mi, they use lard. Uh, which is like pork fat. So we're not doing that halal version again. So the substitute for this is chicken skin and chicken fat. Now I've turned on the turn off the fire um, because this spits. So we're just going to add that in and you can hear a little bit of a sizzle. Then we're going to turn on the heat to a medium and we're just going to fry this up until it becomes nice and golden brown. Just move it around so it doesn't spit, okay? Until your skin becomes nice and crispy. Okay, so once it's nice and golden brown and the skin's taken up like this really golden colour and you can start seeing that, you know, it's rendered all the fat from it, it's gone into the oil, we can now scoop it up. So I'm going to scoop out a lot of the oil because we're going to use that to kind of um, mix into the noodles later. So we're just going to scoop out the oil as well as the chicken fat, okay? Chicken fat and chicken oil is done. Now it's time to cook our minced chicken. So here I have some chopped up garlic and ginger that goes in. Oh, don't forget to turn on my fire. Again, medium to high. Swish it around a little bit until it becomes really fragrant. And then we're going to go in with our minced chicken. Now all of the kicap kicap. A little bit of oyster sauce goes in. Light soy sauce, dark soy sauce, just a little bit of salt, sugar, a crack of black pepper. Mix that all together and you want to cook this until there's a little bit of caramelization happening on the chicken, okay? And the only way to do that is once you've incorporated all the sauces, is to not touch it. Just let it kind of like sit in the hot pan and then you get that beautiful caramelization from the sugars and all of that beautiful soy sauce. I'm going to make some cornstarch slurry. So a little bit of water in a bowl and then we're going to add in some corn flour. And we're just going to break up all the bigger pieces. There's that deep rich colour that's coming from all the different soy sauces we've added into our marinade there. And now in goes the cornstarch slurry. So this makes this gravy really thick and luscious, okay? Pour that all in, give that a good mix. Okay, that's done. Okay, so usually for pan mi, we use um, a poached egg. And look, we've done so many components today. Sis so got no time for poached eggs. So we're going to make soft boiled egg, okay? So this is a little trick. Get yourself a bowl, have some hot water. And what you want to do is you want to kind of like temper it a little bit. So pour in the middle until it hits right at the top. Okay, let it like sit a little bit, shake it a bit, not too much, not too rigorously. And then what we're going to do is we're going to chuck this water away and then put some more hot water in, cover it and let it sit for about eight minutes. And then you have the perfect stuff boil. Egg. So here I have a pot of hot water that is boiling. Usually you use pucuk manis for the soup for pan mi, 
but they didn't have pucuk manis. So we're using um, Thailand for today. So or sawi, and we're just gonna put that in sekejap and just blanch it. Okay, until it's nice and really vibrant. So it just takes a couple of minutes, and then we remove it and set it aside in the bowl. Okay. In the same broth, we're going to cook our noodles. Open up your handmade noodles that you made earlier. Just pull it apart a little bit. I have oh, one of these noodle straining things. Put it in the middle. And then what we want to do is we just want to drop our noodles inside. I'm going to use a chopstick for this process. And we just want to mix it around. It's going to cook in like 3 minutes. To boil up, just cover it a little bit. So you want to bring it up to a boil and then stop the cooking process. I like to add in a little bit of that chicken fat or oil in the bottom. Don't forget your noodles. That goes on top like so. And then we're going to just mix it up. And now we're just going to do a really simple soup. Simple soup means what does flavor? Ikan bilis goes And then I'm just going to bash up this ginger. That goes in as well. And then we're just going to mix this around. One egg. We're going to separate the egg white with the egg yolk. Okay, I just want the egg white. And then we're just going to drop it in. Give it a mix. And then you have a very simple broth soup that goes very well with banh mi. And we're just going to season it with a little bit of salt. Your soup is done. Vegetables done. Now let's plate our banh mi. So to assemble our pan mi, you need to have some of that beautiful chicken that we made. And then we can have our vegetable that we blanched earlier for that pop of colour and green. Don't forget our ikan Soft boiled egg goes right on top. Perfect. So the egg yolk and all that basically makes the sauce. Okay, it's like a carbonara. And then, you know, remember that crunchy bits of um, skin? Yeah. Let's put a little bit of that on top. And don't forget your chilli oil, guys. A beautiful ikan bilis soup with a little bit of that egg inside. Mm. One soup. That's it, guys. That is my chilli pan mi. Made at home. Homemade noodles. Homemade chilli oil. And if you want to impress your family and your loved ones, this is the recipe for you. So if you want to see more videos from me, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Until next time, peace out. I'm going to eat now.